and welcome back to episode 8 of the Beginner's Guide to Elden Ring. Today we will be finding Salem, fighting the first pumpkin head, and locating the Great Axe. So if you go from the Lake Aghil side of Grace and head south on the road, you will come across a telescope type thing. I don't know. <laughs> Basically, it gives you a bird's eye view of the surrounding area. You can use this to, I don't know, just look around. It wasn't really useful for me. There's more, but I never used them. I just, like, traversed on my own. But just because it wasn't useful for me doesn't mean it won't be useful for you. So go ahead and look through it. Just enjoy the view. Now, if you keep heading south, you'll find a caravan of nobles and two giants and a few swords on horseback. In the caravan, you will find the great axe at the back in a chest. Now, you can't just get on the caravan and yoink the great axe out. You actually have to stop it. Now, I'm not sure if you have to kill both of them or just one, but once you stop it and you kill one, it won't move again. You might want to check for yourself if after you kill one, you can go just snipe that great axe out of the way. But in my experience, you have to kill both giants. Now, I'm not going to say this is easy, but it kind of is, especially if you're magic or if you have a heavy weapon that can break their stance really easily. Like most giant creatures, their weakness is their legs. So if you're a mage, uh, don't go for the chest, and go for the knees. Try not to stand too long under their feet, or near, like too close to their feet, because they will start stomping automatically, like super fast, in quick succession. Usually, only one of them targets you, whichever one is the first one you hit. The other one will just look tired, kneeling down. Until you go hit him, he will retaliate. Also be warned, when you break one of their stances and you land a critical, it will sever the chain on them so they will be free to chase you around. So once you do that, uh, just keep that in mind, they will be able to follow you around. Now the easy attacks to bait out that will give you a nice opening is when they kind of like lunge at you or they throw their bodies all on you. Um, they'll stay on the floor for like a, like a second or two and you'll be able to just quickly smack them around. Again, be careful with the nobles that don't have anything in their hands or they just have like a flag. Those are the ones with the um, horns that will notify everyone else to come duff you. Now, don't be scared to get the great axe after you kill the giants and just hook it on your horse out of there. Because it doesn't matter if you kill the rest of them or not. They don't drop anything specific. They don't drop anything special and they don't really drop that many souls. So honestly, it's not even worth the time to fight them all. Now once we get the Great X, go back, rest, uh, get your Estus Flask back, sorry, your Crimson Tear Flask back, and make your way back down south towards the where the caravan is. They will respawn, but there will be nothing in the chest this time.
So as soon as you see them, go ahead and start going leftwards. You will end up in a place called Waypoint Ruins. There will be a giant poison plant and like a couple of budding poison plants. They don't drop anything but poison bloom, which you can use to make poison um, arrows or stuff like that. Uh, nothing important right now, so you don't really need to kill them. Don't worry too much about them. They don't drop anything. Just ignore them and go towards this little building here and go down the cellar. Now again, go ahead and use the wolf spirit ashes that you acquired from Rena. Pumpkin heads are very weak when hit in the body, but they are also very strong. They have a lot of damage, so they're like glass cannon. The pumpkin heads with the flails usually do two to three attack hit combos, or they do a really strong one hit where they just bring the flail down on you vertically, straight down. In my experience, it's easy to dodge his attacks if you just run at him and start strafing to the right or to the left. Magic users, I would highly recommend using Spirit Ashes because when you target him, the auto lock feature basically targets his neck. And when you cast your spells on him, 99% of the time, it's going to be hitting the helmet, which pretty much negates like 99% of your damage. So you're going to want your Spirit Ashes to distract him and you want to move angle towards his back or towards his side to shoot your spells. And for my melee friends, after you dodge, make sure to kind of strafe a little left or right because when you swing, you're going to end up hitting his front and when he's kneeling down after his attacks, you're probably going to end up clipping his helmet as well and again, negates like 99% of the damage you would have done. So easy fight, if you go past that door behind him, you will find Selene, the sorceress. She will sell you more glintstone sorceries. You can take the bells to her. I'm sorry, I mean scrolls to her to learn magic. Now this next portion is just for the mages. If you're a melee user and you don't plan on ever using magic, or if you're a faith user and you don't plan on using sorceries, you can go ahead and stop right here. I will show you the location of a scroll. If you head south from the waypoint ruins, still on the hillside, on the left side of the road, you will come across a camp. Again, you don't have to fight everyone here. Nothing really special aside from the scroll is located here. So if you just go to the far left broken down wall piece of ruin where there's a noble using magic the scroll will be on the ledge of that wall right next to the noble now if you do plan on taking out everyone there is a stake of america so feel free to just keep on dying i guess there will be a easy respawn point there Again, don't forget to use throwing knives and uh, ranged weapons to pull one at a time. You don't want like the whole camera at you.
And with the acquisition of the scroll, that is pretty much the episode. So, thank you for watching and I hope it helped at least one person. I'll see you guys in the next episode.